Now, you also, as a theorist, uh, do a lot of modeling. Yes. How do we even know what to look for? So the gravitation, particularly interesting as an example, is the gravitational waves emitted when two black holes go around each other, spiral together, collide, and merge. This is the most violent event that occurs in the universe, because at the moment when the black holes are merging, they emit gravitational waves with an output power or luminosity that is 10,000 times the luminosity of all the stars in the universe put together. 10,000 universe luminosities, and it's all coming out in gravity waves, none of it in light. It's a brief event. It's an event that will last a fraction of a second if these are black holes that weigh a few times the mass of the sun, or will last a few hours if they are massive black holes at the center of a galaxy, but 10,000 solar lumi universe luminosities. Uh, and, this, and, and we understand the waves that are being emitted through numerical simulations on supercomputers. And I'm going to show you a movie of this. In this movie at the top, you see the two black holes going around and around each other as you would see them against a blue sky in our universe. In the middle, you see the warped space and time as they would be seen by an observer looking in from hyperspace or in from the bulk. Uh, and down at the bottom, you see the gravitational waveforms. The black holes are going to merge. I'm going to pause the movie so you can admire the black holes colliding. <laughs> And then the final merged hole vibrates, and the vibrations die out. And the gravitational waveform shown at the bottom gives us, carries detailed information about the wild oscillations of warped space and time that occur during the merger. But more generally, the waveforms are going to be much more complicated than, than uh, this particular waveform. Uh, these are just examples of waveforms that would occur if you had a little different orbit, a eccentric orbit, or you had one of the black holes spinning. There's very rich information in these waveforms, and our goal in gravitational wave astronomy will be to measure the waveforms, decipher them, and extract the rich information that is carried by them. So these are all, in a sense, a language telling us what those black holes are, their mass, their behavior, right. their properties are all encoded in those different waveforms. And the supercomputer simulations are the things that we use to build a dictionary that tells us this waveform corresponds to what's produced when a black hole tears a star apart, or what's produced when a black hole spinning like this swallows a black hole that's spinning like that. And, uh, and so we are building our dictionary through simulations, and then our colleagues doing the experiments will see what they see, and we will go to our simulation mm -hmm. dictionary to figure out uh, what's going on. So what are the prospects that we're actually going to be able to, to do this? Well, there are four frequency bands in which I expect gravitational waves to be detected in the next decade, or the next maybe. Two, uh, one of these will take, maybe take a little bit more than a decade, maybe 12 years, 13 years. There's a high frequency band, which we will talk about, where something called LIGO uh, 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 works, a band between 10 oscillations per second, 10 hertz, and 10,000 hertz. There's a, uh, a th that's a ground-based detector. LISA, the laser interferometer space antenna, operating in the low frequency band, periods of a few minutes to a few hours of gravity wave periods. Very low frequency band, which uh, uh, Andrea Lohman will talk about, where she is the leader of the effort. Uh, periods of roughly a graduate student lifetime. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 months to years. And then the extremely low frequency band, uh, where the wavelengths of the waves are roughly the size of the universe, uh, which will uh, be studied using polarization of the cosmic microwave background. So we can talk about all of these at one time or another this evening. I should